Good morning, everyone. Uh, my name is Mary Moran, and I'm the president of Calgary Economic Development and the uh, CEO of Opportunity Calgary Investment Fund. And welcome to the news conference for the 10th and 11th funding agreements from the Opportunity Calgary Investment Fund. To begin, I'd like to acknowledge Calgarians live, work, and play on the traditional territories of the peoples of Treaty 7 region, uh, uh, sorry, region in southern Alberta. These include the Blackfoot First Nation tribes, Siksika, Pukani, Kainai, Stony Nakoda First Nations tribes, Chiniki, Bearspaw, Wells, Wesley, and Sutina First Nations. Uh, the city of Calgary is also the homeland to the historic Northwest Métis and the Métis Nation of Alberta, Region 3. There are a number of firsts for us here this morning. This is the first event that Calgary Economic Development is hosting in the COVID-19 environment. So we are adhering to the health and physical distancing protocols and appreciate that you respect them. We are also live streaming an OSIF news conference for the first time to give people the options to participate. This is also the first news conference since Mark Blackwell uh, took over the, as the board chair from Barry Monroe, and we also added Jill Angevine, Alice Reimer, and Dr. Elizabeth Cannon to the Opportunity Calgary Investment Fund board. <laughs> and most significant, this is the first time that we will make two OSIV Opportunity Calgary Investment Fund announcements at the same event. Opportunity Calgary Investment Fund is making a $3.25 million investment in Alta ML and a $4 million investment in Harvest Builders. The, the funds available to Alta ML and Harvest will be amongst the most significant investments made by Opportunity Calgary Investment Fund and both are vital additions to our technology and innovation ecosystem. And certainly with so much challenging news these days, this is an opportunity for us to start moving in a positive direction to start solving some of the problems we face here in the economy and Calgary. There's a lot to get through this morning. We'll hear from Mayor Nenshi, who is a member of the Opportunity Calgary Investment Fund Board. We'll hear from Corey Jansen, who is the CEO of Alta ML. We'll hear from Kate Thompson, who is the CEO of the Calgary Municipal Lands Corporation. And we'll hear from Chris Samer, the CEO of Harvest Builders. Harvest has taken this incredible office space from CML CMLC, and Kate will give us a sense of what a growing business community means to East Village and to downtown Calgary. We will have a question and answer period segment with the media before we conclude the news conference. And afterwards, Harvest has kindly offered to take us on a site tour here of the new offices. I will now invite a man who needs no introduction in Calgary, other than to say that he is a valued member of the Opportunity Calgary Investment Fund Board, in addition to the other hard work he does for all Calgarians. So please welcome Mayor Nahid Nenshi. Oh, this I'm supposed to go that way? I just do what I'm told. It is usually uh, what I do, do what I'm told. Welcome. Uh, welcome to the East Village. Welcome to this beautiful building. Let me just say personally before we get too far that uh, I also sit on the board of the Calgary Municipal Land Corporation. And uh, when we put this building up, it was always sort of meant to be temporary. And I thought, well, this is such a beautiful building. It'll be such a shame when it fulfills its purpose as a sales center. And uh, so I remember all being on the board asking, going, can we keep it? <laughs> can we move it somewhere? Can we do something with it? Uh, and I'm thrilled to see this new life uh, in this beautiful building as well. And I think it's important that we are here in the East Village, which for so long uh, was a symbol of what Calgary couldn't do. And in the last decade has really become a symbol of what Renaissance looks like. It's become a symbol of what rebirth and redevelopment looks like. And the fact that the Opportunity Calgary Investment Fund uh, is making these investments that also are in this neighborhood, I think makes a big difference for thinking about what is possible 
And that really is what I get excited about with the Opportunity Calgary Investment Fund and with our work here uh, at the East Village. It's also not lost on me that we are here in the place where Calgary began. The confluence of the rivers, the Mokintstis, is just a little bit down the road here. If you have a minute afterwards, take a walk down the Elbow River Traverse and take a look at Mokintstis. I do it all the time just to remind me why people are here on this land and what we've come here to do together. And one of those things we've done here for a long time is innovate. Calgary has long been an innovation hub, and this is another example of that. When we established the Opportunity Calgary Investment Fund, it was about innovation. It was about supporting and fostering that reputation, taking steps to further diversify the economy of our city. Since people first gathered at Mokinstis, they have been entrepreneurs. People gathered here to trade. People gathered here to create those economic and social relationships that build community. And building on that entrepreneurship is a message that is incredibly important that we want to send around the world. We have the world's biggest brains here, working on the world's biggest problems. And that's really the critical thing about what Calgary Economic Development does and what the Opportunity Calgary Investment Fund does. You know, when we think of that vision, Canada's city of choice for the world's best entrepreneurs. We can stop there, but you know what? Any city can stop there. We want to be the city of choice for the world's best entrepreneurs. What's important here is the next part of the sentence. We want to be the city of choice for the world's best entrepreneurs interested in solving the world's biggest problems. Whether those are problems of energy, of food, agri-food and food technology, whether they are problems in life sciences, whether they're problems in financial services, getting access to finance for others, uh, for, for people around the world, all of these things really matter and in terms of what we're trying to do here. Which is why, finally, getting to my point, I am so excited to welcome both Harvest and LTML to our tech ecosystem. We get lots of pitches at OSIP from lots of different tech companies, all of whom use the word ecosystem all of whom talk about how they are going to be transformative beyond the work that they do. But these two companies were very exciting, and that's why we've made these substantial investments in these two companies. They're going to build pathways for our current and future entrepreneurs to help build those companies that will define the future of our city. The ones that go beyond the great ideas, the, one that's, the, the ones that go out of the garage, that disrupt, invent, that transform, that make change happen for people to be able to live better lives. And even in order for existing companies to successfully prepare for the future, they'll need access to talent, which is one of the exciting things about Alta ML and the work that they're doing. And the fact that that's happening here, in a place where this kind of gathering is happening for so many thousands of years, to me is very fitting. Amazing things are gonna happen here. Great advancements, great progress, great success. And people say, when did that happen? How did that happen? People will ask that around the world and they'll say it happened here. It happened in the East Village, it happened in Calgary. So this is exactly what we why we established OSA. So I'll say again, thank you to uh, my colleagues in Calgary City Council. Councillor Jeff Davison is here with us. He uh, is Council's representative to the OSIF board and to Calgary Economic Development. I want to say thank you to the hardworking staff at Calgary Economic Development who also support OSIF in the work they do. Mary and her team, we're very proud of you every day. And a thank you to my colleagues on the OSIF board, volunteers all, uh, who really work incredibly hard to make sure that we're making thoughtful investments for the future of Calgary. So, to Corey, Nicole, and Celia from LTML, to Chris from, Harvard, my, from Harvest, my problem is everyone's wearing a mask, so I don't know who's who under these masks. So to all of you, <laughs> Uh, let me say thank you. Thank you for doing what you're doing. Thank you for choosing Calgary. I look forward to extraordinary success. Thank you so much, Mayor Nenshi. And um, you reminded me that I probably should have had two coffees this morning because I actually neglected to uh, introduce some of the board members, including uh, 
outside of the new ones, uh, including Councillor Jeff Davison, uh, who also sits on Calgary Economic Development Board and the Calgary Film Centre Board with, uh, with our organization. And of course, we have Mike Brown, who has been on the Opportunity Calgary Investment Fund Board for quite some time. And of course, Joe Lougheed, who sits on, uh, is the chair of Calgary Economic Development and also supports us with the Opportunity Calgary Investment Fund Board. So while I, I, my, I, I will call, next call Corey Jansen to the podium to speak about Alta ML and the plans that uh, he has with his team to uh, impact Calgary's innovation ecosystem. Um, I do want to give Corey a lot of credit to, for agreeing to have uh, this announcement for his company in the building of another company's announcement. But it's the kind of collaboration we need to do to get through this very, very challenging time. And getting to know Corey and Lucas in particular, I know that they are committed to the value of, of collaboration. What I can tell you, like the mayor, that excites me about Alta ML is that the pipeline of talent that they are looking to establish here in Calgary. This is a really important time. We're at this great inflection point in, in uh, our economy and in our community. And the work that they are doing will help us build a very strong workforce and help us transform our economy and our industries for today and for tomorrow. They are looking, working with some of the biggest players in Calgary, including ATB Financial, who is here, Spartan Controls, and are expanding uh, to other companies to, to increase the number of people working in artificial intelligence and machine learning. So please join me in welcoming Corey and his wife uh, to talk about Alta ML. Thank you very much. Uh, we're thrilled to be here today uh, to announce the, or and unveil the AI internship program. Cory and I started Alta ML two and a half years ago because we wanted to bridge the gap between academia and industry in AI. Um, we're still young, we're only two and a half years old, but we've managed to amass the largest AI data science team in the province. What we've seen over the last couple months is that while there are a lot of businesses struggling, no one is canceling their AI strategy. And what that tells us is that once we figure out what this new normal looks like, AI is going to be a big part of how businesses adapt. And we see this program as a catalyst to that change. And I would dare to say that this is going to change the face of Calgary. OSIF has been instrumental in making this happen. Their forward thinking is, is what made this happen. Artificial intelligence and machine learning are a horizontal enabler for business. We might go as far as to say that AI isn't an industry unto itself. You can have the best data scientists in the world, but unless you've actually got data to work with, you're, you're kind of out of luck. This is why Calgary is so key. The data sets, and more importantly, the decision makers are here. The future of our company's growth revolves around Calgary for that reason. We believe that this program will be a catalyst, catalyst to that growth and allow it to fast track our hiring plans and fast track what we can do for the ecosystem in a way that wouldn't have been possible without OSIF support. When we talked to other firms in the ecosystem, we found that they were having the same problem we were. The talent coming out of post-secondary was world-class, but they didn't have experience working with real business problems in applied AI. And so the core of this program is to take 240 Calgarians through a paid internship program that will teach them how to work with real business problems and with real data. You know, the term diversification is used a lot. You know, our take on this is that diversification does not mean that we turn our back on the industries that got us here. Calgary should be and will be the center of AI and energy. We should be a global, global player and we will be in FinTech. The intersection of academia with large corporates startups and the government 
is frankly what got Alberta to where it is today. I see a whole bunch of parallels with the oil sands. To the extent I we almost think of this as, could this be oil sands 2.0? What could this be in the next five to 10 years? This is the billion dollar industry and we're just at the onset. This wouldn't be possible without leadership and that government support to paint the vision and to show the way. So we really want to salute uh, Mayor Nenshi, uh, uh, Mary and Mark and the rest of the OSA board. There's too many names to mention here. Um, but most importantly, I really want to thank the, the leaders in this space, ATB, Suncor and Spartan Controls, are true leaders in the community. You all know these names, but you might not realize the leaders that they are in terms of their digital transformation and the forward thinking towards AI and how that applies to their core business. I also want to maybe do a quick shout out to uh, Alicia Peter Peters at OSIF, who's been instrumental, Claire Kay on our team, who's been awesome. Um, but most of all, uh, there's one Calgarian here who deserves, frankly, 99% of the credit for that, and that's Lucas Shear, our managing director here in Calgary. He's somewhere in the room here. <laughs> Lucas pitched me this idea about a year ago, and I told him he was crazy. He said, how are you going to get all these different pieces together? How are you going to get all these different groups? And, and he did it. And we're going to change the face of this city. Over the, the coming months, you can expect a number of additional announcements. Um, uh, we're very excited in terms of where this is going. We've already made our first hire. Uh, we've, we've got Danielle, who's going to be leading this program for us. She's on day minus 15. She doesn't start for another two weeks, but she's here. So we're ready to go. Thank you so much for your support, and we just can't, uh, can't express our gratitude and our optimism for what this will mean for Calgary in the coming years. Thank you very much. Thank you very much to both of you, and I couldn't agree with you more. I think some of the companies here, if you talk to them about their digital roadmap, they sound like tech companies, not banking companies and or uh, energy uh, support companies. Um, I, I, uh, and I would also just say, you know, I, I agree with you, Corey. Lucas uh, was his stick to itiveness on this uh, because, you know, the thing about Opportunity Calgary Investment Fund is we always want to create a state of, or a work of art for Calgary, something that's very catalytic. And of course, he was patient with us, guided us, and I think we've done the right thing here today. And I'm really thrilled to be partners with you in this project. I'd now like to invite my friend and colleague, Kate Thompson, who is the new president and CEO. Well, not, not that new anymore. You probably can't use that because the old guy showed up uh, today. But, um, but I'd like you to invite, uh, I'd like to invite you up to tell us about East Village and the partnership that you have with Harvest and uh, what we have to look forward to. So please welcome Kate Thompson. Thanks. Thanks, Mary. It's so different to be able to stand here and see everyone in their masks. Uh, I'm just going to imagine, unlike imagining everyone naked, imagining everyone smiling and, and doing well. So it's a good new way to go. Um, so it's really interesting to be standing here. We opened the uh, East Village Experience Center over eight years ago, so just before I started with CMLC, actually. And it was created to be a storytelling vehicle for us to talk about the vision and what's coming next in East Village. Right where all the cameras are today is, was a great model that we kept adding to all the different projects that kept coming into the village and to tell our story. We had multiple school children, people interested in buying condos here, people interested in urban planning perspective, really trying to understand what do you mean you have a vision? Because outside all we see is kind of dirt roads and, and nothing built yet, so tell us what it is. And this is exactly the type of aspirational hope we had for the village is that we'd move the storytelling from this central inside location to outside. So go outside, go on Riverwalk, as the uh, mayor talked about, go over and get a coffee, experience the village, because right now it's no longer a model, it's a one-to-one -one scale model outside. And that was the hope, and uh, through hard work of many individuals in this room, uh, we are where we are today. So we 
When we started over eight years ago, since that time, we've had over 140,000 people through these doors, which is really uh, fascinating to us when we started with a master plan in 2007. Uh, the idea was that we would always grow this space as a storytelling vehicle and have it evolve. And I'm so happy to be standing here today and see that evolution happen with us, with our, with our new partners. So um, when, when we saw in the early this year, we saw the sales needs changing for the district and understanding what that looked like, we looked to what could we do with this space. As the mayor said, it's a beautiful space. How can we occupy it? Um, and, and that's when Harvest entered this, the, the, um, the fray. So we had a tour of Harvest buildings over their new space in M2's building, just to the east of the Simmons building. And it kind of seemed like unless you had a hoodie and uh, a laptop, you weren't allowed in that space. But we had a great tour of that space, had started conversations with Chris and started talking about what other spaces we had because of their growth in Calgary and their projections for the future. They were bullish. And we wanted to support that. We wanted that type of energy and activity here in Calgary. And so I uh, so became the partnership of having Harvest in this space. This is the type of people we hope to attract to East Village, the thinkers, the dreamers, the doers. And that's the, the partnership we have with Harvest. We're thrilled to welcome Harvest and their team. I see many of you here today. And we're excited to see what the future holds and how you can help us activate what we call East Village and what, we're, what our dreams were built on. So happy to share in this announcement with Mary and your team from CED and welcome Harvest to a growing dynamic neighborhood that includes our partners from Platform that will be opening their building early next year and also SAPL, School of Architecture, Planning and Landscape. So this is the dynamic type of uh, individuals that we want in the village and what we uh, hoped for for the future. So we're happy to have you all here today. Thank you. Thanks so much, Kate. Uh, definitely the location where the cool kids will be. So uh, thanks for hosting us here today. I will next invite the CEO of our second Opportunity Calgary Investment Fund recipient to come to the podium. Chris Samer is one of the founders of Skip the Dishes franchise, and he is now looking to support other entrepreneurs. Chris is from Winnipeg, but when he and his team were looking for the right location to launch a, a Pan Prairie venture, cap venture building studio platform, that's a lot, uh, they chose Calgary. Harvest is important because it helps fill a funding gap in the local ecosystem and promotes local venture capital investment. So please join me in welcome Chris. Thank you, Mary. <laughs> you think that's a mouthful? I mean, to get names, uh, who would have thought of a name of the dish as abbreviates down to STD? <laughs> I'm sure my head of PR is shaking her head right now. <laughs> Today is an important day for Calgary and its burgeoning tech ecosystem, especially at a time when it's needed the most. We just heard about the amazing investment in LTML, which will see our artificial intelligence, machine learning, and data science talent grow. I can't stress how important and critical that is for our ecosystem. <laughs> Next, we announce a partnership to support Harvest in the building of new globally competitive companies that will make use of this talent. And we announce the expansion of Harvest headquarters into the East Village. Having grown Skip the Dishes, I can speak firsthand to just how challenging and difficult it is to scale a business to compete on the global stage, especially when doing so in the prairies. We default to the idea of global entrepreneurship and innovation, only happening in large centers. And we don't often think of it taking place in the smaller mid-sized markets like Winnipeg, Saskatoon, or even Calgary. <laughs> and historically, that has been true. There has been less resources, capital, and experience available to, make it, to take, take advantages and make this happen. So you can't really blame an entrepreneur for thinking of moving to the greener grasses of Toronto, Waterloo, or the Silicon Valley. Well, our mission at Harvest is to break down the perception and to create a global epicenter of innovation right here in Calgary and across the Canadian prairies. At Harvest, we take an active role in the co-building of each venture and equip them with the seasoned, hard-to-find talent and lock the capital needed for their growth and ultimately uh, turn ideas into realities. The investment today will support a team in doing just that. In the recent weeks, we've heard the leaders of our province speak to the critical need for tech innovation and to unlock new opportunities in sectors like fintech. I, I could not agree more. In fact, our initial portfolio is specifically focused within fintech and the prop tech spaces. And one of our cobalt ventures, Neo Financial, will be launched later this summer and will drive new innovation in one of Canada's most antiquated sectors, retail banking. 
and that's just a start. With the support of this investment, our team will continue to build new companies that drive forward Alberta's tech sector, bring in hundreds of new jobs, millions of new investment, and continue to fuel the funnel of new innovation technology in Calgary. I personally believe there's a real potential and opportunity for Calgary to become one of Canada's great tech hubs. <laughs> Not only is the city filled with entrepreneurial talent and soon to have more data science expertise as well, but it's also a great place to live and work with an amazing quality of life and cost of living. Harvest belongs to a growing network in Calgary's downtown where accelerators, builders, leading organizations come together to support new ventures to the phases of ideation, scaling, and growth. <laughs> and it's with, as we continue to expand our footprint through these partnerships, <laughs> we aim to build a campus here in the East Village and work together to put Calgary on the map. In wrapping up, I want to thank our partners at CUD, OSIF, and CMLC. You guys all know who you are. Your investment and support are critical and will help drive our mission forward in creating the meaningful here in Calgary and across the prairies. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, thanks so much, Chris. And, uh, you know, I think it's very clear to say today that we are definitely advancing our community built strategy. Calgary in the new economy, and we have made a quantum leap today in uh, helping support that vision of Calgary to be the city of choice for the world's best entrepreneurs, where they can come and solve the world's biggest problems in energy, agriculture, transportation, logistics, and increasingly so, providing better health solutions and uh, fintech solutions, as the mayor said. So with that, that concludes the formal part of our uh, program, and we would like to open it up to the, uh, to the floor, to the media, for questions uh, to be fielded by any of the guests today. Oh, sorry, you should probably identify yourself too, Amanda, in case anybody doesn't know you, but... <laughs> Amanda? Okay. So Harvest is a venture builder. What that means is we're actually taking an active role to build the ventures that are incubated, scaled, and grown within Harvest. So the, the job creation with, uh, we're uh, talking about with the investment with OSIF will be in the range of about 290 jobs. Uh, it's just a starting point. Uh, that'll lead to many more jobs afterwards, but those are the jobs that will be created in the ventures, uh, incubated, scaled, and grown in Harvest and the other companies that we support in the local ecosystem here in Calgary through other types of services, such as having uh, recruitment, HR services, uh, creative, uh, engineering kind of type of services, or even uh, things as, as simple, or uh, you think are uh, critical as PR media that aren't really available for these type of companies earlier on to make it available to create this job growth. Did that answer your question, Amanda? Any other questions? Hi, Tom. For me? Oh, for Chris. Yeah, so the question there is, is about what, what, is, what is right about Calgary? What brings myself or uh, many other entrepreneurs and uh, other tech-minded people to Calgary? Well, I think <laughs> using evidence of AltML, showing that there is a really strong aptitude and uh, potential for artificial intelligence, ML, data science. I think it's a very strong <laughs> resource we have here. We have not yet capitalized on a mass opportunity there. <laughs> um, I think also, um, if you think of cities that have gone through uh, ups and downs, recessions, and different kind of recessionary periods, that creates opportunity. Anytime there's a change of, of economies, a change of, of um, uh, I guess not wealth, but change of focus of industry, that creates gaps in the ecosystem, white space. So it's very exciting for an entrepreneur to come in here and fill the, literally the fill this white space. To come here and think about what the elevator could be for the future, five years, 10 years from now. But most importantly, it's through working with lead organizations today, as mentioned, ATB, or the, the oil and gas sector here at home, to work with them to help transform a drive for the future. So the, all those things that excites me personally, 
It's the people, it's the, really the, the leaders already today, exist here today, and the economies that could create their future. Okay, so the question here for Amanda is, uh, how many companies that we've supported so far, what's the traction to date, and what's the plans for the future? Is that so? Uh, so up until now, we have been, uh, we've secured uh, about $4.9 million from the feds uh, in order to set up a pilot. And we chose Calgary uh, because we did believe in this city for potential. Uh, our focus is the prairies as a whole, but with the investment of OSEF, we're going to double down and focus in Calgary with this investment to create new ventures, new, new jobs, and, 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 and fill the footprint here at home. Um, uh, through the pilot, we've uh, started uh, focusing uh, to prove out the concept uh, on Neo Financial. Uh, our, uh, the CEO of Neo Financial is right around the corner, Andrew Chow. You can speak to him afterwards. Um, that's just to prove out that we can demonstrate the rapid skill and growth. So already to date, we've ever hired over 80 people there to help grow that business. Now it's just it, it shown that we can skip the dishes, Neo. Next, we're going to turn attention towards new ventures. And the type of ventures we're looking for are ones that have, uh, are in a large market space, hence why fintech and prop tech we focused on initially, um, looking for <coughs> disruptive technology that will create a massive amount of value and change in the industry, and uh, looking for right people to be able to be part of that. We're not going to focus heavily on, on, on folks in 100 companies a year. We're more focused boutique on maybe one, two, or three companies at a time, and really give more resource, more focused to de-risk that investment unlock the capital locally and ensure more success rather than just take a shotgun approach to it. Uh, and do reach out to harvest.builders is where you can find more information um, and uh, reach out to the, the forum there. It's the best way. Their team will pick up on it and uh, we'll be able to uh, share more about our, our mission vision and see if you can be part of it as well. Thanks, Matt. Great. Any other questions? Okay, and I understand from Brad there's no questions online either. So uh, with that, we'll conclude the Opportunity Calgary Investment Fund. But before we let you all go, I know that the mayor would like to do the news of the day. If there are any. Any if questions for me on anything else? Go ahead, Tom. Well, you know, ultimately, people, as in the room today, start wearing your masks now. Uh, we're not going to enforce it until August the 1st uh, because we do want to give people the time to get masks. We want to give businesses the time to get their processes in place uh, in order to help people masking. But fundamentally, although the enforcement will not start until August 1st, imagine that it is the rule now. And I heard from my... Uh, my daily reporter on her train ride today that she has never had above 35% of the people in her car wearing a mask before, and today it was 65%. So we're trending in the right direction, but people really ought to start now. Yeah, actually, I've noticed in the last week people using the mask more inside grocery stores and places like that. But uh, going back to school, are you concerned about the kids going back to school in the spread of COVID? And You know, I'm, I'm, I'm quite nervous about this because I was very, very surprised to see the province yesterday announce a more or less back to normal uh, school reopening schedule on the same day they announced record infection growth. Uh, and I was even more surprised uh, to feel that the province somewhat dismissed the issue of masking within schools. This morning I heard the Minister of Education on the radio saying she is following Dr. Hinshaw's advice and she doesn't know what Calgary is doing. Well, here's the thing. Dr. Hinshaw has said, oh, approximately five million times, if you cannot stay two meters apart, you must wear a mask indoors. And I cannot imagine how at Sir Winston Churchill High School, students can stay six meters apart uh, in the hall, or, or six, uh, two meters or six feet apart in the hallways. So certainly we need a better plan from the education minister. We need a better plan from the government of Alberta. And if we don't have one, you know, the city of Calgary, we have to maintain people's safety. And if we have to step into the fray, we will. But ultimately, this is the jurisdiction of the uh, government of Alberta and the Board of Education. But parents have been telling me for the last two days that what they got yesterday was not good enough.
Uh, yeah. Well, absolutely. You know, they've left it up to the school boards to do, um, but I think parents across the city and students across the city are really looking for better guidelines. Just saying the same amount of students, but you're going to somehow be physically separated, uh, and somehow there's going to be more cleaning, um, but there's no real plan or no real funding for that. I can imagine why people are skeptical. And so uh, we have a very blunt tool. And our blunt tool is say you have to wear a mask indoors. Uh, the government of Alberta and the Board of Education have the ability to have more thoughtful tools. Like, for example, as we've seen in other jurisdictions, students have to wear a mask in the hallway. They have to wear a mask until they get to their desk. They can take the mask off at their desk but they do have to put it on if they're doing close group work. There's lots of ways to do this. Lots of jurisdictions have done it. It's not like we're recreating anything here, uh, but I think that it is fair to ask of the Minister of Education uh, for a more thoughtful uh, reopening plan than what we got yesterday. I, um, you know, the challenge, of course, is that there are no council meetings in the month of August. And I think we'd be doing uh, citizens a disservice if we waited until the third week of school uh, to actually move on this. So this is a conversation that needs to happen very quickly because council may need to take action next Monday. Or I call a special meeting. Okay. Thank you very much. Thanks, and everyone. Thank you to the recipients, the guests, and of course the media for participating today. Appreciate it. And We'll be just do a photo.